Ask credit by Smil3y Angel. Have you ever been drunk or high and came up with this truly amazing idea but then became sober and realized it wasn't as amazing as you thought it was? If so, what was the idea? A friend of mine called me around 3 o'clock in the morning about a fantastic, groundbreaking idea he had for getting sunburn on your feet. He wears Crocs a lot, so I was actually kinda interested. Okay. Okay. So, like, cloth or something you can put on your feet that would keep you from getting sunburned from the holes. Socks. He was describing socks. The amount of people who invented socks in this thread is too damn high. To have a fast food spot that sold frozen meals already cooked. Like you can order a heated up hot pocket, toaster strudel, chicken pot pie, etc. That would be called Applebee's. Whilst hi I came up with the idea of making pens with white ink that would cover up any mistakes on white paper, realized not only that it had been done already but that I had one in my backpack next to where I keep the pen I used to write down the idea. Edit, Mr. Word. I came up with that one in kindergarten my mom then told me about white out lol. I wanted to write them demanding partial credit because I hadn't heard of it so had the idea too. Mom said we were out of stamps. While taking what I thought was acid and turned out to be a 25 boom, I was beyond confident that I had not only finally understand the truest deepest secret of the universe, but that I had distilled the idea into an image that could be drawn out. I was certain that with that image I could remember everything about the true universal secrets when I came down. And X200B. The next day I looked at the paper, and it was a line with a circle on each end, like a dumbbell. I have no idea what it means. Deleted. A food truck specializing in egg rolls the size of burritos. I once thought edible tape would be a game changer idea. For when your burrito, or huge egg roll, rips just tape it back up with edible tape. The TV show Cheetahs, except with stray cats. Candid cameras catching cats being unfaithful with other neighborhood cats and a human host interviewing the cats getting cheated on, just like the TV show. Still kinda want this to be a thing in a sober mindset. This but it's catching cats being unfaithful to their human owners by being fed by a neighbor who thinks they're astray. Running for my local school board. I had a lot of issues with the way the education works in our country and believed the best way to fix the system was by running an honest campaign and promising to fight for the change that would help kids learn better. Ultimately, I sobered up and realized an, at the time, unemployed. Stone 24 year old with no kids was not the best candidate. I'd vote for the unemployed guy who was pissed off at the shitty education he received. The man has an axe to grind. My niece drunk texted me and went on and on about her idea for party popper tampons. She wanted to make tampons that shot out string and confetti when you pulled the string. It was all something about women celebrating their freedom and vaginas. It was a very confusing 2am series of texts when she was just supposed to let me know she made it home safe from her night out. This gets funnier the more I read it. Deleted. King Kong but with a giraffe. They said ideas that aren't still great when you sober up though. Sugar bags. Like tea bags but for sugar. Tea and two sugars. One tea bag two sugar bags. As we were stoned as fuck, my cousin holding up an empty tea bag filled with sugar and me trying to carefully tie it back up with a piece of cotton, my cousin disappointingly says sugar cubes. HMH, what if you made presugard tea bags? I got high one time and thought of a great business idea where everyone pays money to pot and one person wins it all. Turns out the lottery already exists. Sounds more like a tontine. I thought it would be practical if you would have a tag with your address written on it attached to your keys, so if you have lost them they can be sent back. Seemed brilliant to me, thieves might enjoy this idea as well. 
Edit. Thank you for the awards kind strangers. My bank does something cool that solves that problem a keychain with a dog tag that has a specific code that the bank registers to your address if you lose your keys. Anyone who sees them can throw them in a mailbox and they'll be sent back to you. A thing you put on the laptop charge a thing that gets hot which keeps your cheese dip hot. It now what? Now that I use a laptop and know how hot the battery can get, you just might be onto something. My friend is a lawyer and when he was in law school did a summer internship to Ghana studying international law. We were like two blunts deep and he came up with the brilliant idea to make chairs in Ghana because everyone he saw there was just sitting on the ground. He was convinced we could have made a fortune selling chairs. In my first year of engineering in uni one of the design projects was to come up with a chair made of cardboard. The idea was to make a chair supportive and comfortable enough, whilst also being easy to assemble by cutting out shapes on a large piece of cardboard so as to keep the shipping costs low. The winning design was supposed to be implemented, and if my memory serves correctly, the initial pilot program was going to be for a small community in Ghana. And X200B. Edit, I don't have time to properly consider most replies at the moment but I promise I'll get my way to them in the foreseeable future. I have, however, replied to some that jumped out at me. Thanks to everyone for the love. I had this idea that the Taken film should each focus on a different set of skills. Like Liam Neeson could be an amazing chef in Taken 2, and perhaps a postman in Taken 3. Honesty this sounds like a much better version of what we got. But I still wanted to involve saving a kidnapped person somehow. Exacto spoon. It is an exacto knife only a spoon. Like the tiny spoons they use for samples at gelato places. My notes app is full of liquor weed soaked epiphanies and revelations from my younger years. My favorite reads, any boy that has the pineapple is a good boy. Correct. Juba. Juba for Orthodox Jews. You would prearrange when the Juba would come get you to go to synagogue, and you wouldn't have to open doors, walk, etc. Turn signals on grocery carts. I once had the idea to have two left turn signals on a car. One for a regular left turn, and a different one to indicate you were going to do a U-turn. I have no idea why this made so much sense at the time, but for the rest of that night I legit thought I was a genius. When I did shrooms, I came up with the absolutely genius idea that NASA should employ young children and send them to space for missions because they have more natural curiosity and aren't jaded yet by adulthood and they might notice things that a more experienced astronaut would miss because they'll look from a different perspective. I was convinced I needed to email NASA right away and tell them about my brilliant epiphany. Edit. Apparently I really need to watch Space Camp and the Astronauts and read the Enders Game series. I appreciate all the kind comments and awards. They also have less weight, saving expensive fuel. I had this idea for a movie in a similar vein of Cabin in the Woods, where these people move into a haunted house, except the plot is from the antagonist's perspective, where the ghosts haunting the house treat it like a job, and have interviews in front of a camera, reality show style, venting about how tedious the little aspects of the job are. The premise was this ghost had reluctantly picked up and followed this family to this new house in order to keep haunting them, and inadvertently stepped on another ghost's jurisdiction, and they bicker about who haunts who, antics ensue. I realize now that this is more or less just what we do in the shadows. Damn you taker. Edit, alright guys, I'm trying to make it as a musician, and have made decent progress so far. And when I do, I'll go the Atlanta or Dave route and bring this up in a hopefully eventual pitch meeting. Thanks for your encouragement y'all, and please don't steal my idea, maybe? Give me 5 years. Yours sounds equally as amusing and fully worthy of its own film. There are lots of films out there with basically the same premise. My grand idea was to put caramelized onions in my hamburger helper. 
Yeah it was good but not as mind blowing as I thought it would be when I was high as a kite. Did you caramelize them while high? I have a strict no stove policy when high. Also no climbing trees which I never seem to want to do except when I'm high. Got really high and had the sudden realization that things that are lighter than air are the things that float. I wonder there's more than just helium that's lighter than air contents how come we don't have other ways to fill balloons and stuff than my friend goes ever heard of the Hindenburg Dumbus? See not a bad idea. So hydrogen is flammable. But if we are only using enough for one party worth of balloons, homemade hydrogen tanks just add water and electricity. I was thinking that kids these days need more time on the road to be better drivers so maybe Uber should partner with driving education groups and like subsidize them or pay the kids in college bonds or whatever. Yeah maybe hiring a bunch of terrible drivers for your taxi services isn't such a great idea. Lol this is great. Hi my name's Kyle, I'm 14, this is my mom, so where ya headed today? I have a running note on my phone with my ideas I have while intoxicated. I think my best one is what if there was a queer eye spin-off called Third Eye where hippies and conspiracy theorists try to awaken people who are already happy with their lives. Most of them are just dumb with such highlights as future math will be cool and there's a lot of cute animal behavior. I love it, would 100% watch. Would this be like what not to wear and their friends and family secretly film them and enter them in the show and then third eye comes and gives them a forcible conspiracy makiover? Everyone ends up in cult where in their house is redecorated with tinfoil wallpaper. One time when I was tripping I wrote down this whole page of numbers and swore it was the answer. The answer to what I don't know lol I just kept saying it's all about the digits. The numbers Mason, what do they mean? Here's a good one from my list of Heidi's. Dumpsters, trash cans, and dives, live a stream dumpster diving like American Picker's Storage Wars, but completely bullshit pricing guesses with fake accents. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't even be the worst thing on TV. Beer Ox. When drinking at an outdoor place, using plastic cups, you put fancy rocks in your beer so the cups don't blow over. Genius. Mine was similar. The theory was, the top half of the cup of beer tastes better than the bottom half, so we make cups that have the bottom half already full of something else. We invented smaller cups. When a football match goes into extra time, they should add a second ball. If it gets to half time without anyone scoring they add a third ball. I'm actually not sure this idea is a bad one. Bobby, you can't solve every problem using pinball logic. Once while high my friends came up with an online call center for people who have anxiety while high to call. It was named TripAdvisor. These exist and be good around the globe bar trips it trips at me etc. I was on acid and had a revelation that I had to make the next Google. I have no idea what it means to be the next Google but regardless it felt like the best idea in the world. The feeling of checking my notes app the next day for the grand idea I had and seeing be the next Google was hilarious. What you really need is some kind of hot tub time machine. I wrote a song I thought was really beautiful, turned out it was carry on my wayward son. Not me but Paul McCartney. The first time he got high he apparently discovered the meaning of life and immediately went to write it down. When he woke up the next morning he looked at the paper and it said there are 7 levels. My creative writing tutor had a comedian friend who kept dreaming about telling the world's funniest joke. He'd get a standing ovation every time and he toured the world on this one joke. But when he woke up he could never remember it. One night he kept a notepad next to his bed, woke from the dream and scribbled down the joke. Got up the next morning, looked at the page and it said I am a hammer. Yep. Pre-melted cheese. Edit. Okay I feel the need to clarify as people are saying nacho cheese or Valvita or cheese whiz. I was so baked, my idea was pre-melted cheese, like a boil in the bag rice, but for cheese. Like a block of cheddar cheese, 
in a sandwich bag and boiled till molten, and then it stayed molten, like didn't solidify and I could just pour it on stuff. Like I was so high, I literally forgot all the aforementioned products existed and I though I was going to be a fucking millionaire, then started to talk with my friends about where I should live, be it LA or New York, in a penthouse suite, and have a butler and maids and shit. Then I came to after passing out at some point, and I remember the entire conversation and think holy fucking god, I'm a fucking moron. Hear me out. We melt the cheese then freeze it. Then anytime you want melted cheese you just pop it in the microwave for a couple of minutes. Deleted. Always felt free throws in basketball slowed the game down too much. Felt instead they should have dunks instead. Where the player that was fouled has a running start from the 3 point line and the one who committed the foul is at the basket defending against the dunk. I suppose this could turn into an endless loop of fouling. Is this Shaq? I ran upstairs and yelled at my husband why don't they make mittens for feet and he said you mean socks and I said oh yeah, socks. This makes me think of the German word for gloves, handshoe which literally translates to hand shoes. You're basically reverse engineering the German language. Myself and two friends were extremely high and extremely hungry. We put all our money together and said that we would buy the most amount of food for the amount of money we had gathered. We had a total of 16 pounds. So our thought process was we could order 16 portions of chips, french fries for you Americans. We had to call the takeaway three times before they would believe that it wasn't a prank. We convinced them we were throwing a party. The takeaway finally delivered it and myself and my other friend were too high to go to the door so we made friend 3 go by himself. All of the lights were off and there was no music playing so the delivery driver delivered 16 portions of chips to one man alone from his perspective. Needless to say, 16 portions of chips is too much food between 3 people. Ordered two 60x 40cm pizzas high as a kite all for myself. Got about 3 stroke 4 through the first until I gave up. Stomach aches for 2 days and a sense of self-loathing to this day because I finished both of them within the next day. Once, while thoroughly drunk, I ordered a pizza and it arrived overcooked. Crust was like dried asphalt and the toppings blackened and singed. So I pitched the idea to my other drunk buddies that pizza places should let their customers control the pizza ovens through the internet, so we can decide when it's done. Which then lead to an entire design your own pizza machine website combo, where one could control exactly how much of each ingredient to add using robotic arms and you could watch it cook live through an oven cam. Seemed brilliant at the time. So like, making your own pizza? Deleted. Hull up, you invented the wheel? Cardboard boxes for kitty litter that open on the side like origami. Forms a litter box for cats. At the end of a week you fold it all up, throw it away and then open a new one. So much cardboard waste, because it would have to be treated to be water resistant on the inside and would be completely unrecyclable afterward. One of my philosophy professors told a joke about a philosopher having a dream in which he met Socrates, but quickly saw the proper rebuttal to his views, which Socrates conceded. Then he met Aristotle, and Descartes, and Kant, and Nietzsche, and Mill, and with each of them presented his contrary position successfully. He knew he was dreaming, but he thought I have to wake up enough to write this down he managed to become conscious enough that he quickly scrawled the words down on some paper then fell asleep again. The next morning he woke up, remembered what had happened, and excitedly grabbed the note. It read yeah, that's what you say. Oh god, I did something similar. I was having a dream where I felt like the secrets of the universe were being revealed to me, and I had gained some irreplaceable piece of wisdom that would change my life forever. I woke up. In my half asleep blurry sleepiness grabbed my phone and opened my notes app to write down this critical knowledge. In the morning I vaguely remembered the dream, convinced that there on my notes app would be the key to life and the universe. All it said was, the age of the worm shop is infinite. 
When I was in high school, after a lengthy hot box one evening, I came up with the reverse candle which would consume carbon dioxide and produce oxygen while also providing shade. Everyone truly thought it was a good idea so we wrote it out on paper so we wouldn't forget. Later, the next day I had realized we invented trees. See? This is the kind of insight being high gives you, though. Before now, I would never have considered how a candle could be the opposite of a tree. But now it makes perfect sense. I don't drink or smoke, but a friend of mine was drunk and picked up a guitar, started playing, and thought he wrote the song Walk by Pantera. My friend got high and wrote Possum Kingdom by Toadies. Usually I make big plans that cost a lot of money and then promise sober people that we will do them. So they start to look forward to the plans, I sober up, and regret all of my decisions yet still have to follow through. Most recent was that I promised my sister that I'd bring my daughter to visit her in Florida $2000 later, I have a sunburn. Always do sober what you said you'd do drunk. That will teach you to keep your mouth shut. Ernest Hemingway my wife and I got this genius idea after smoking a fatty to create the next big hit in the snack world. Cup crepes. A cupcake made from mini grapes stacked on top of one another topped with whipped cream and strawberries. Well a mill crepe cake is already a thing that exists, so I am certain that someone must have made a miniature version at some point. All you need to do is make it the next big food trend. I was high. I made some killer mac and cheese and I saw that I had some bacon, so I cooked up the bacon and cut it into small pieces and put it on the mac and cheese. It was so goddamn heavenly that I forgot bacon bits and bacon bits on mac and cheese already existed. In my fit of excitement I texted my friend my total e brand new never done before creation, and I was told that it already existed. I made a soup sandwich while really high before. The soup obviously just destroyed the bread's integrity, and just fell out the sandwich. That was the first time in my life I realized just how dumb I am. Don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, bread bowls exist. Basically the same thing. Deleted. Tangentially related. But there's this great comic book called Sex Criminals about a couple who stop time when they orgasm, so they fuck each other and then rob banks to save a local library that's a ton of fun. Definitely a great read I would recommend. More to the point at hand, the first volume got collected as a hardback called Big Heart Sex Criminals, but the dust jacket was removable and, worried that readers would remove the dust jacket when reading the book in public. The author and artist made sure that what was underneath the dust jacket was, even worse, https colon slash slash i dot red dot it slash ckm0 mobevnv21 dot jpg close bracket dot